see if I could do this in stop and go traffic without losing the camera again for my rapid racing starts in my awesome 1.4 liter non-fuel injected engine, which I love very dearly, by the way. I'm making this video this morning because I have a long, long day ahead of me and my, my brain cache is gonna be completely flushed from all the other information I'm going to be stuffing into it over the course of the day. So I won't remember what was going on this morning that I wanted to make a video about. So here, here you go, you're welcome. Congratulations on the high quality video. I don't know if I'm letting the cat out of the bag on her, uh, on her Discord, on Teresa's Discord, which you could find a link to her Discord in on her channel, she made a little video welcoming everybody to her Discord. But on her Discord, she released a response, apparently I didn't know that I warranted one, to one of my Ramblin' with Amblins where I, I was amused that she had made it out to be next to impossible, or at least my take on it, and if I misunderstood her, then I apologize. But my impression of what she was saying was that it was impossible to get or next to impossible to get these uh, engineering studies out of Leon Valley and that they had tried, her and her, her friends had tried and and apparently apparently I should have inquired further as to what steps they took because I, I made the brash move to just simply email and ask. I emailed and I called, but whatever. It was the email I believe that, that prompted the response. And I got a very, very prompt turnaround time is, I mean, they were, they were very helpful. So the, the thing that I am, I am worried about at this point, or I've been worried about is this demonization of Leon Valley. It seems like every, everything they do, no matter what they do, they are just evil, horrible people. And so you know, I got those, I don't care about the red light cameras personally. I don't, I don't run red lights, so they are not going to cost me a dime. And if you don't want to pay a red light fine, a red light violation, then don't run red lights. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, problem solved, case closed. They can't fine you. It's not a tax, it's a fine. They can't fine you for it if you don't do it. Amazing, I know. A revolutionary idea. Don't break the law, you don't pay fines. Woo! Um, and yes, running red lights do cause accidents. Um, and yes, running red lights do cause traffic issues in general. And personally, I like I, I don't think the engineering studies are necessary. Um, it seems like another step of bureaucracy. If if a if a random guy can't walk out there and see things that this engineering study that I'm sure Leon Valley paid a crap ton of money to do. Probably tens of thousands of dollars for these stupid studies. But if a average Joe Blow can't walk out there and look at the paint, oh yeah, there, it's clearly marked where the intersection begins. The paint is good. Look at the lights. Oh, you know, th this street's running east and west. Maybe we need the little backers on it so that so that people can see when the lights are red and the sun's behind them. If they can't say, oh, hey, there's a blind corner coming up to this intersection, maybe we should put a little warning light saying that, hey, the light's red ahead or something like that ahead of the intersection. But whatever, maybe that's just, maybe that's just my Dunning-Kruger, maybe that's just my lack of knowledge as to what's going on, but from what I've, what I saw, I did read very cursory reading of the uh, of the reports. Because again, they're not my cup of tea. I'm not a traffic safety engineer, but I read them, and they didn't seem all that novel to me. Um, it was interesting to read the like how many cars pass through the intersection a day, how many cars pass through the peak hour, what the peak hours were. I found it interesting that in a lot of these intersections. Like a hundred more cars per day would pass through in one direction than the other direction. And I'm just thinking like, what, how, like you leave for, and then you don't, that's weird. Like, it just seems a lot, right? Whatever. But anyway, my point is, my point was before I rambled 
that there are a lot of accusations that in and of themselves don't really seem like much, but it all piles on to Leon Valley is a horrible, horrible uh, city and, and, you know, they're all witches and should be burned at the stake. And it's amazing, amazing that it's not the citizens of Leon Valley in general that are having issues with it. It's outsiders, which causes alarm bells in my head. You know, all, all the protests at Leon Valley over the police abuses, those weren't by Leon Valley citizens. I mean, people went out of their way to find Leon Valley citizens and they found the uh, alkaline waters guy who made a small fortune by selling water to these people. So obviously, and they found some old people who were wearing like USA sweaters, matching USA sweaters or something. I mean, they just didn't find a whole lot of support in the community. And I'll bet you that if they didn't have their propaganda blinders on, they would have found a lot of people in the community who supported it, who support the actions of the uh, police department and the city hall. So, and who, and who dislike outsiders coming in and protesting what's going on in their city. Just my hunch. Speaking of the, uh, of the kind of absurdities being heaped on, I, I did manage to get a hold of Salvaggio's resume that he submitted to Leon Valley. I haven't posted it up because I need to go through it. They did, it does appear that they redact, redacted um, information, like uh, contact information for references and things like that. I just, I don't want to put it up without without me going over it to make to make sure, to make double, gosh golly, gosh darn sure that uh, I'm not putting up anything that is gonna get me in trouble. Uh, but I'll, I'll end up putting it up in the uh, doc section of my Discord. It's, <laughs> I understand it's a resume, and you should understand it's a resume too. It's obviously Salvaggio putting his best foot forward, but the guy was in the Air Force for a long time. I forget how long it was, but he was in the Air Force for a long time. And they have this little uh, grading criteria that they give, you know, for each particular individualized standard. And it was some general who signed this off, so I'm going to assume that, that this is all legit and everything. If the options were uh, doesn't meet or meets the standard, every single one was meet the standard. If it was doesn't meet, meet or exceeds, every single one was exceed and they'd have little blurbs in about how amazing he was and I mean the guy's a boy scout the guy is a literal boy scout at least as far as the air force is concerned um the only blemish that I could find in there and the only blemish that I'm aware of is the post-it note and the post-it note was ridiculous I mean I congratulations internet sleuths on finding it but if we remember the facts of that he was walking out of the classroom with the post-it note that was the seat that said where he had to sit, and he had written some notes on it while he was in there taking the test, presumably of things that he wanted to study again or check on when he when he got back. Um, but he had the he had the note with him, and he was taking it out. I don't know what exactly he was going to do. I don't remember that. But the proctors of the exam didn't have an issue with it. They just like, hey, you know, you got to leave that in here. And he's like, oh, oh, yeah, well, right here you go. Whatever, cool. He wasn't trying to hide it. He didn't fight it. There was no issues. Uh, it got uh, sent up to some administrative review to check out. And they're like, yeah, there's nothing wrong here. And then it wasn't until there was an issue with some allegations of impropriety in the sh in the sergeant's exam, I believe it was. And he was taking the captain's exam. So there's he wasn't part of the alleged impropriety. But then the police department started doing a witch hunt. And they would look for anything so that they could show the public that they're, that they are, you know, keeping, keeping their noses clean. And they found this post-it note incident. And they, it appears that, that uh, Salvaggio was the sacrificial lamb for it. I mean, if, if you don't see that, I can't make you see that, but that's, I don't know Salvaggio. I've never met the guy. I live in California. He lives in Texas. I have nothing to gain by doing this. This is, what I see and I'm not saying I'm not saying that he's never done anything wrong he was he was wrong in my estimation he was wrong to arrest the witnesses that was wrong 
that was wrong. There's no justification for that. He's unless unless Radner completely screws the pooch, Radner's going to win on that particular point. He may not win on the other stuff, but I think he's going to win on the uh, unlawful arrest of the witnesses. But I didn't. Anyway, um, yeah, the post-it note is is eh. Salvaggio. I've gone over Salvaggio's arrest of Padilla for trespassing. I've made videos, probably three videos on it. I've gone over it frame by frame. He, Salvaggio was smiling. Um, he was polite when he first came out. He reacted to Padilla. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that he could sense, just like you could sense when, uh, when Freeman's being disingenuous. I can sense when Padilla is being disingenuous. I, I suspect that Salvaggio is also completely capable of suspecting when, when people are blowing sunshine up his skirt. And it was Padilla that escalated it by Padilla's actions, by Padilla trying to speak it in, Sp in Spanish, probably swearing at him. I'm not really big on Spanish swear words. I'm really good with English swear words, but I'm, I'm not really a bilingual swearer. But everything I've seen of Salvaggio, other than arresting the witnesses, seems to be completely above board. He seems like a reasonable dude. His, his interactions with Bao, messing with Bao, I can totally relate to that. That's how I mess with people, you know? Someone wants to like do a selfie like Bao was doing, yeah, I'd put my arm around him, sure. I'd make him uncomfortable. Yeah, dude. All right, here's your selfie. You wanted it, now you got it, right? Eh, whatever. Yeah, I'm still waiting on, uh, I haven't seen anything yet on uh, the open records request I submitted. I submitted on, was it Saturday or Sunday? I think it was Saturday. But we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping to get some juicy tidbits. And uh, if and when I get them, I'll let you all know what they are, obviously. Uh, a cop in my Discord said that uh, said that you could detain someone for suspicion of loitering. Responding to my video this morning about reasonable suspicion. And while technically that's true, I just want to point this out. If you're using that as a pretext for... Because remember, uh, detention is an investigative detention. You are there to investigate whether or not a crime has occurred. If you detain someone for loitering, you better be using it as a as a investigative detention or a court's going to see that you're just abusing it. It's, well, I was, I was detaining him to see if he actually was a loitering. No, I was detaining him to see if, you know, I was detaining him while I went and checked the codes to make sure that he was actually meeting the definitions of loitering. That's fine. Probably. But yeah, so while technically that cop was right, this is just a little, little addendum. While technically that cop was right, it was, uh, it's not quite as cut and dry. Nothing in law is quite that cut and dry. So you always have to look at the facts. That's why it's so hard. Everybody wants bright line rules about when you can do this, when you can't do that. And it's just, those don't really, those don't really exist. It's always tests. It's always a, a reasonableness test of some sort. And there you go. Anyway, I guess I've rambled long enough. So if I if I did uh, mischaracterize Teresa's statement or argument, I apologize about that. Uh, but I'm just like just like I defended Bao when someone was trying to smear him by saying that he didn't serve overseas when he did um, in uh, Operation Was It Desert Storm or Iraqi Freedom or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I think about you. The truth is the truth and lies are lies and I'm going to go after the truth whether it hurts the cause or helps it because the truth will come out in the long run no matter what you do, James Freeman. So thanks for watching and have a great day.